Our next speaker should give you a terrific guide how to navigate the challenges of this year. Now, he knows what he's talking about as he has emerged as the first winner of the hit Pan-Asian TV reality show, The Apprentice Asia. Today, he's a much sought after motivational speaker all over Asia and has authored many best-selling motivational books. His awards are way too many to mention, only adding prestige to his many accomplishments. If there's one thing you can remember him by, it is his now famous quote, you are never too small to make it big. And his life story affirms that he, as he comes from humble beginnings to a cum laude graduate from the University of the Philippines. Give a listen, ladies and gentlemen, to your USANA brand ambassador, Jonathan Yabot. Good day, my fellow USANA teammates. This is Jonathan, and I'm here to congratulate you for your happy 12 years of serving health for our fellow Filipinos. I'm also here to motivate and inspire you as usual as we pivot and evolve in 2021. So before I start, I want to energize everyone in the chat room. I know this is a virtual session, but that's not an excuse for us to be as energetic as I know all of you are. So could you please type an exclamation mark in the chat box right now? Could you please type that? As many exclamation marks as you can, better. I would love to see that. And that also energizes the rest of our teammates who are in this session today. So I'm about to share my screen now. And there you go. My title, the title of my talk is The Art of Finding Your Ikigai, Building Your Purpose and Evolving in 2021. The year 2020 has been a year of so many challenges, right? Can I get the letter C in the chat box? If you're that person who has, you know, all personal challenges, business challenges, career challenges, you face it. But hey, you're watching this now because you have survived. You are thriving and you're going to get through because you've learned from a lot of those setbacks in 2020. My talk is about helping us achieve further our goals because the road ahead of us is not going to end. The road ahead of us remains to be tricky and unpredictable. And so moving forward, what do we do in order to achieve our ambitions and our goals? If it's your first time to jump in into this session or if it's your first time to interact with us, this is my organization, by the way, JY Consultancy and Ventures. We take pride for having conducted our sessions, not only in Southeast Asia, but in many parts of the world. We do talent management, public speaking, business writing, leadership and motivation. And these are some of the clients that we've had since 2013. And of course, Yusana being my favorite client for so many years now, I thank you again for the privilege for having me in your 12th year celebration. If mabitin kayo, if you happen to see some more, want to see some of our webinars, all you need to do is to log on to our website, jonathanyabut.com. You can also scan the QR code. As part of Extra Learning, we offer so many free courses on public speaking, business writing, digital selling, and also leadership. So we hope to see you all out there. Okay, let's get to business. Let's interact with each other in the chat box. As I mentioned a while ago, Type as much as you can and be as noisy as you can and share some of your content and your opinions. Number two, I'll be asking some polls throughout the session. So when you can, please share letter A, letter B, or letter C. Let's start with the first poll. Are you guys ready for this? Yes? So could you please type your answer in the chat box or choose it uh, from the screen that you will see. How is your 2021 doing so far? Okay, I want to see that. Letter A, I'm challenged but taking it one day at a time. Letter B, I'm thirsty for more learning and challenges. Or letter C, I have learned so much in 2020 and it made me stronger for this year. I want you to give me 120% honesty. There is no right or wrong. The goal is to acknowledge your feelings because as I always say, self-improvement starts with self-awareness. If you don't admit how you're feeling, you don't get to identify what you need to do next, right? So my topic for today is about ikigai. Ikigai is a Japanese term which refers to your reason for your being or your why. So it starts with the iki, which means to live, and kai, which means the effect or the result. 
the Japanese believe in this case that it is the purpose or sense for being alive associated with feeling of fulfillment and accomplishment, which I think a lot of our folks from Yasana are very familiar with. The popular interpretation of Ikigai involves living for others, meaning the moment you have achieved something for yourself, the goal is to be able to share that with others so that others can also thrive together with you. So when you look at your careers, when you look at your businesses right now, I want you to reflect. We have careers and hobbies or activities in life that A, we love doing. We have some careers and businesses that we're good at it. Or number three, it helps other people. And then the fourth one, which I think is very important because you have to put some food on the table, and that would be number four, it pays the bills. I want you to reflect in your careers right now, in your businesses, right? In your growth and journey in USANA for the past few years, where do you think you fall into today? And before you answer that, some of you may be saying right now, John, I'm not just into one of the circles, I'm in the intersections of the circle. And I totally get you. Some of you may fall under what we call as passion, the combination of you love doing it and you're good at it. Could be mission, it helps other people and you also love it. Or it could be a profession. You may not always love it all the time, but you know uh, that you're good at it and it also gives you a comfortable life, right? Could you please type this in the chat box now? Are you letter A as in passion, R as in profession, M as in mission, or V as in vocation? I type it out. I want everyone to see what your answers are. So I will assume some of you are going to be typing letter P, letter M, could be letter R, letter V, whatever it is. But here's the other catch. Some of you may also be saying now, John, I'm not in any of those four. I am actually in the center. And if that is your answer, my dear friend, you are one of the few lucky ones who we can call have already discovered what their ikigai is. That sweet spot that you love what you're doing, you're very good at it, it helps other people, and it also pays the bills. It gives you the comfortable life. Can I get the letter I? Is there anyone in the room right now? who can say that they have found their Ikigai, okay? And again, I'm not gonna be pressuring you. If you haven't found it yet, that's totally fine. That's normal for many of us. But many of us at this early stage may have already discovered our Ikigai, the ability to enjoy the good things in life and also be able to share and live up to it for others as well. Why is Ikigai important? Because when we look at a lot of studies and a lot of organizational behavior research across companies, successful organizations that have lasted for so long, that are continuing their legacy, attribute their success with their Ikigai. If you look at this, one of some of my favorite brands, you got Nike, you got Tetra Pak, you got Starbucks, for example. When you look at their employees, and if you ask them, what do you do? Many employees of Nike can easily say, well, we sell shoes or Tetra Pak, which is the packaging for your carton of milk or juice, will say, we sell packaging for liquids. Or Starbucks will say, we sell coffee and tea. Here's the interesting part. When you look at the employees of these organizations, they don't just talk about the what of what they sell. They talk about the why they sell them, which is their purpose and their ikigai. Folks from Nike will say, we'll not, we're not just here to sell sporting goods we're here to sell victory. We're here to inspire you in your journey. After all, Nike is the Greek name of the goddess of victory in the Greek mythology, right? Tetra Pak isn't just about packaging for liquids. They also have the mission of making and ensuring food and beverage to safe and last longer. If you don't have your carton and milk in those Tetra Pak uh, packaging, they won't last that long for seven days or for one week without refrigeration, for example. Coffee and tea, according to their CEO, Howard Schultz, and he says, we're not in the business of making coffee. We just happen to make great coffee. We are rather in the business of delighting your daily routine. May I get an exclamation mark? Could you please type in the chat box? Do you find it amazing that these organizations are thriving? have been doing well for the past years of their existence because they focus not just on the what, but also on the why 
as well. My dear partners from Yosana, I'm going to throw the same question for all of you. Could you please type in the chat box, you reflect your journey with Yosana. What is your Ikigai? Could you please type? And if you're new in the company, that's also fine. If you're new in the organization, look at the Ikigai that allowed you and attracted you to join this organization for the past 12 years. What could it be? So I'm, if I could check the chat box right now, I see a lot of you can give me a personal or a career-related Ikigai. But here's my personal opinion. I'd like to believe that the Ikigai of Yusana and it's the reason why you have been successful for so, so many years is because your ultimate purpose and goal is to ensure that our fellow Filipinos or whoever enjoys your products and services live a healthy and nourished life. Can I get an exclamation mark? I hope you appreciate that. This might sound chummy and cheesy, but not everyone gets to wake up in the morning telling themselves that if I'm able to sell my products to someone and that person gets to enjoy, my customers get to enjoy my products, I know that I can improve how they see life. Their health, which I'd like to believe is one of the most important things we realized in the time of pandemic, not everyone gets to wake with up wake up with that realization every morning. So please, I hope you don't underestimate that power. That is the reason why you are so passionate, why you are so engaged. I've been telling this way, way long ago, even to Mam Dudai, for example. The first time I joined in the Mall of Asia, the first ever uh, annual meetup, I've never seen in my entire career, in my 20 years of career in the business world, such energy and passion and commitment from its people. That is emanating, you know, like something na tataas talaga ang balahibo mo. I've never seen something like that in my life because you guys are attracted. You guys are committed to your ikigai all the time. And I hope you, do, you never lose that flame, right? Can I get an exclamation mark? Are we? Uh, realizing something. I hope you were appreciating that, right? As we evolve and pivot in 2021, that is something that I hope a lot of you further strengthen in 2020 when a lot of the Filipinos today are now more conscious about their health. So quickly, two things to manage for your Ikigai. John, how can I further improve my Ikigai? How can I use that to become stronger, faster, better in 2021? Well, number one, I want you to please Embrace evolution as the key to meeting your ikigai or your purpose. Always be obsessed and never be tired of evolving, learning, and being the most absorbent sponge, telling yourself that I can always learn because life is a learning buffet and there is nothing wrong with being greedy with learning as many things as you can. Let's check if you are evolving. Can I ask, in the past four weeks, have you discovered a new application or software that makes you work better? If your answer is yes, that says something about you, how you're hungry for more. Another question, in the past three months, have you learned a new skill for selling? Have you? Third question, here's another litmus test. In the past six months, have you found a new mentor or coach instrumental to your business, to your sales objectives? Yes? Could you please type an exclamation mark if you have learned someone? If you have discovered someone, for example? If your answer is yes to all of these three items, that says something about you. You are a curious learner. You are thirsty and hungry. You are open to adapt, to change, and be resilient. That even things don't go the way they want you want it to happen, you don't give up and you say, I will get it done because I deserve to get it done. That's what happened in 2020. We all had our plans in January of 2020. We thought our plans were formidable and all these things, but the pandemic happened and we couldn't get out. We couldn't see our customers face to face. So our goal is to adjust and find ways in meeting them. And you guys have been doing so well in your game as well. I want to give a quick example about this. Anyone here who's, who likes basketball, can you give me a letter B, right? So one of the basketball icons that I think many of us know is Steph Curry. And here's an interesting story about evolution. So Steph Curry is about 6'2". The belt is so-so. 6'2 is not the 
tallest height that you can have in the NBA. It's pretty much the average height in the game. And this guy, being 6'2", said, how do I stand out? How do I get even better when I know that I'm already good in my shots, but I think there's more space to improve? 2009, 2010, when he won awards such as Rookie of the Year, you'd notice that many of his shots, and if you're looking at the photo right now, many of them are in the three-point zone and are also in the two-point zone. But what did Steph Curry did afterwards? He said, why should I pressure myself being stressed inside, inside the court when I can pivot and do much more bigger points in the three-point shot area? I know it's more challenging, but hey, if I can do good at it, then I will be less stressed because no one is going to guard me that much at the outside part of the court. A lot of the other players discovered this and they started to notice that, hey, this guy's formula is also doing well. And if you notice, and here's a great anecdote, you look at the top 200 shot locations in the NBA from 2001 to 2020. What do you notice? I'll give you five seconds to look at the screen. Many of the top locations have now evolved from the two-point shot area into the three-point shot area as well. This is how I want you to evolve, my team, my partners from Yosana. Always asking yourself, how can I be better, faster, and stronger? Can I get an exclamation mark? If you are amazed with that story, I hope you guys are, and I'm so inspired every time I see this story. Speaking of evolving, could you please ask yourself, which state are you in right now? Are you in the state of being or are you in the state of becoming? The state of being asks the question or the statement, I finally achieved what I wanted, okay na ako dito. This is my line of expertise. This is where I'm comfortable. And it's okay to be in that space because you are a master of your craft. But from time to time, when things evolve, your environment, the customers, the technology, a pandemic happens, a volcanic eruption happens, whatever it is, you tell yourself, my way may not be the only way, that there are other ways of succeeding. And so you jump into the state of becoming. You tell yourself, mission one accomplished, on to the next. Or how do I make sure that this victory is repeatable? Because one time victory is called, can someone type in the chat box, right? It's either called luck or chamba. And you don't want to be recognized in your teams that you succeeded just because you were a one-hit wonder. You want to achieve grander things consistently. The state of being is what we call as the performance zone. The state of becoming is what we call as the stretching zone. Pag isa kang cup of coffee, punong-puno ka na, you're not satisfied. You convert and evolve into a gallon, a mug, a bigger jug, a bigger vessel. You become the most absorbent sponge telling yourself, I can learn more because learning is an infinite space to enjoy. Reflect on your businesses this 2021 and ask yourself, do I fall in letter A, performance zone, or letter B, stretching zone? Again, there's no right or wrong. Could you please type your answer? You could be in letter A, and you could also be in letter B. Some of you may be answering, John, I'm in both. I am performing and I am also stretching. That's also a good way to say it. My only point is this. Do not stay in the same zone for too long. You can't be performing too long and yet you're not adjusting your tricks. You can't be stretching too long. Learn ka lang ng learn, but you're not applying what you're learning into the reality. Balance is also always going to be the key. Okay. Finally, our standards for success kasi are relative, right? In psychology, meron tayong tinatawag na uh, reference bias. Kung sino lang nasa paligid mo, whoever's just around you will be your basis of comparison. So when you're already a very big fish in a small pond because you have conquered so many things, you tell yourself, I'm already at the peak. And then one day, you meet someone who's bigger, smarter, stronger, faster than you and tells you, sorry, you're not the one at the peak. That's not yet the peak. This is the real peak. And you realize that even if you think you're already big and grand, apparently, sometimes your ceiling could just be someone else's floor. Could you please type that in the chat box? Sometimes my ceiling could just be someone else's floor. I want you to remember that line. Whenever you feel mighty and proud, na ang dami mo nang na-achieve, think again. Sometimes that peak 
could just be the basin of someone else's journey. I always tell this to myself, if I have achieved something as well, don't just keep on looking down. It's easy to look down because other people are looking up to you. Masarap ang view. Sometimes when you're at your peak, what do you do? You look upwards again. Why? Because when you look upwards, you realize that there are other mountains and buildings even taller than yours. And you get inspired and you tell yourself, my journey doesn't end here. In fact, the journey will never end. After you succeed, you create a new peak and you decide yourself that that is going to be my new goal. That's the same thing that we are setting for 2021. May I get an exclamation mark? Can we please energize again our chat box? I hope you're realizing something, learning something also. Okay, very good. Let's do a quick contest. Can I do that? Let's, let's chill for a bit. I want to give away some prizes. I'm going to choose two winners if you get to answer my question. So what do you need to do? I'll be giving you a quick puzzle that you need to answer. You need to join our Viber community for that. So I'm going to collect your answers on Viber. And if you win, what's the prize, John? I'd like to invite you to our upcoming premium webinar, a four-hour online bootcamp. Boost your confidence. Perfect for salespeople like you. Public speaking and business writing happening on February 20 and 27 at 10 o'clock p.m. The ticket is 1,299, but I am going to give this away to two winners. Are you guys ready? Yes? So John, do I answer in the chat box? I will request you to please join our Viber community first. That's the QR code. You can scan it right now, or you can copy the link into your browser. I'll give you a few seconds to do that. Yes. And then when you get into the Viber community, please go to the information section and look for the admin. You have to send a message to the admin. Okay. Can I get the letter V? Please type it in the chat box. Uh, if you have a Viber, I'm sure you guys, many of you have. We use it for both personal and for business. Yes. All good. So again, scan the QR code or copy the link. And then it leads you to our Viber community. You have to contact the Viber admin, okay? So whoever wins, I will be announcing the winner in the USANA Facebook page after this event. So please check the Facebook page. We are going to announce two winners, and each winner can tag along a plus one. Para naman hindi kayo solo when attending our session, okay? All good so far? So here is my quick puzzle. There you go. Which is the top view? Could you please choose? Is it letter A, letter B, letter C, or letter D? Okay, time starts now. Okay, we will be collecting all of your answers. The ones that we'll be selecting are the ones who did it the fastest. So fastest fingers will win. Okay, I hope you capture that and we'll be announcing it again after this event in the USANA Facebook business page. All good? Okay, let's proceed. Here's my last part now. To be able to get through 2021 and pivot and evolve, please understand what fuels your Ikigai. What do I mean by this? When we look at our purpose and our mission, we can categorize it based on what's fueling that mission. So I'm going to borrow a concept from one of my favorite psychologists, and that's Mr. Julian Rotter, and he calls that as the locus of control. There are two kinds of people though, according to Mr. Julian Rotter. People who have an external locus and people who have an internal locus. External locus means you believe that life is unpredictable, therefore you can't do anything about it. Or internal locus, meaning yes, there are unpredictable things, but I still have a sense of control. I still can decide my fate and my destiny. In this case, individuals, according to Julian Rotter, who exercise more internal locus, meaning they believe that they can take control, number one, are able to thrive better in times of challenges, something we need in the time of pandemic. And number two, whenever they experience mistakes and setbacks, they exhibit more accountability. They owe up to their own mistakes because they know that they can correct it and they, they can get better because of it. My dear friends from Yasana, could you please type your answers in the chat box? Reflect on how you're building your purpose, your ikigai in 2021 and forward. Whenever you build and discover it, do you practice letter C, internal locus, 
or letter D, external locus, right? No judgment here. Whatever your answer is, just share it. The key to self-improvement starts with self-awareness. So ideally, what we want is to lean more towards internal locus. That's when you exhibit more control in your life, even if things don't go the way you want it to happen. But John, take a look, huh? is it wrong if I'm 100% internal locus only? And the answer is yes. It's also bad if you're too extreme. In this case, we have what they call as unhealthy internal locus. Unhealthy internal locus meaning, for example, from a leadership perspective, you want so much control that you end up micromanaging your team members, believing that only you can change things. We call this, by the way, in leadership jargon as having the Messiah complex. Only you can save everyone. Or the inability to delegate or trust people. In personal life, for example, if you keep on hoarding too many things, like in the time of pandemic, nag-hoard ka ng bigas, nag-hoard ka ng lahat ng alcohol because you think the world will end, that's also unhealthy internal locus because you're trying to micromanage and keep control of things. From time to time, there should also be space for external locus, admitting that there are things that you cannot control. However, John, you said that internal locus is better. Is there an extreme version of external locus? Of course, there's also something wrong if you keep on saying that everything is unpredictable. For example, unhealthy external locus means having a bahala na attitude, believing that, eh, wala nang mangyayari eh. Whatever I do, no one is listening to me anyway, so I might as well not do anything about it. Or, ito yung mga people na who believe uh, having 100% Belief na if it's not meant for me, it's not for me. And yet, they didn't even work hard for it. Can I get an exclamation mark in the chat box? Can you relate to people who say something like that? Yes. Sometimes it's okay to believe that if things aren't meant for you, it's not for you. But if you didn't do anything about it in the first place, then it's all because of your own shortcomings. Wala ka namang ginawa talaga eh. So nothing will happen to you in the first place, right? What we want is to be in the center of everything, right? Having a sense of balance. When we keep on believing na wala nang mangyayari, even if we do something about it, we call that, according to the psychologist Martin Seligman, as learned helplessness. These are people who have long-term conditioning of the mind, believing whatever you do, you will not succeed. So why bother moving? Or ito yung mga people who say, after repeated stress and failures, lagi nilang nagkakamali, lagi nilang hindi tama ang ginagawa. They start believing that the situation won't change. So they stop trying. I want to challenge the leaders and the managers also. All the coaches here in USANA, you have a culture, a great culture of coaching and mentoring. I want to ask the same thing for you. When you inspire and motivate your people, do you strike a balance telling them that yes, you have the external locus, but you also have internal locus at the end of the day. Great leaders and coaches pivot more to the internal locus and say, maraming challenges in life, but you can get through it because you can take control of it. Balance therefore matters. We also call it as the Goldilocks rule, right? It's not good to be always on the external part. Neither is it too good to be always on the internal locus. Just the right amount, not too hot, not too cold, not too soft, and not too hard. This is what we call as balancing, right? So individuals in times of challenges like the pandemic who exercise more internal locus succeed better in times of hardships. It's all about the mental exercise. People with external locus will say, I'm scared, lahat na lang ng tao nagkakasakit, I will likely get sick too. So there's no point for me to protect myself. But hey, internal locus will work better for you. Yes, there, there are a lot of risks, but you're gonna be safe if you stay more at home and if you boost your immunity every day. I know that this is something that resounds so well to a lot of our customers in USANA. Number two, external locus means you keep on telling yourself, grabe, I'm so stuck and bored at home. Wala na akong magawa. I feel empty. I feel like my mind is not doing well. Internal locus, on the other hand, means, teka lang ah, all these times I've been complaining. Wala akong time for things in life. Now I have more time. I finally have time to do things I always put off. So I will take advantage of this quarantine situation. 
Or number three, everything is crashing. It's the end of the world. Wala na. That's external locus, right? You submit yourself to the unpredictable things. Internal locus says, it's normal to feel anxious. Lahat tayo ganyan ang feeling. But how do I become a better person after this? Five years from now, gusto ko lang tawanan ang nangyari sa pandemic. But I also want to smile and tell myself, I didn't like 2020 or 2021, but those years got the best out of me and I succeeded and thrived. I became faster, better, stronger. I learned new skills and I discovered people who can mentor me and I can mentor as well. As I end, here's my last quote. Finally, when you succeed this 2021, and I know Team Yusana that you always succeed, remember to please pass it on. You are a team. The success of Yusana is all about holding hands together because every person is a brand ambassador. Take note of this quote, putting out the light of others doesn't make yours shine any better, right? It doesn't, right? Kahit tanggalin mo ang upos ng kandila ng kasama mo, it will not make yours any brighter. But here's the good thing, the converse of it. If you pass on that light to other people, what happens? The room becomes even brighter, right? And nothing happens to your light. It's the same. But because everyone now has their own light, you get to traverse and take the journey together with more clarity. Yes? Can I get an exclamation mark? Team Yusana, I hope you're all inspired and motivated and learning something for 2021. Yes? Could you please type that again? More exclamation mark or hearts? I will appreciate that also. Yes? And with that, I am going to thank you for having me in this session. Congratulations, more years to come. I'm always gonna be here for you, cheering you, supporting you as always. And thank you also for inspiring me to be good in what I do. Because hey, as I always say, the speaker is only as good as the people interacting and sharing him. Thank you at maraming salamat po.